I've been blessed. In one way, that the Spirit of God has constrained me or stopped me from doing something that I wasn't ready to do. He caused me to feel convicted of a reality that I knew I was not prepared to deal with at the time. So the consequence of my choice caused me not to be in the place where I could communicate the things of the Spirit that He wanted to made known and related to so that people would understand who He is. And without proper representation, without there being a direct communication or an interrelationship of man and spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, will not allow you to do the things you want to do if you are, in fact, walking in the Spirit. If you are, in fact, communicating with Him as a person and dealing with Him directly in a way that perhaps you might not have known before, but that He is seeking to cause others to know Him in that intimate way because the world may be going in one direction, but the Spirit of God will always return back to God. And that's one way that you can always tell when the Spirit of God is directing you to do something because the Holy Spirit will not speak of Himself, but He will reveal Jesus. He will cause people to remember the things that Jesus has said. He will observe to do and to cause to be done the Word of God and to be fulfilled as well as the hear to hear that with which the Spirit of God would speak to them because that is with which the means of how we understand the things of the Spirit for they are spiritually understood, discerned and decided upon by His choice as to how it applies to us personally and individually. That's why you can look at a Bible verse at any point in time and it is possible to get something different each and every time that you look at it because the Spirit of God is the teacher. The Spirit of God is the person who is opening up the understanding or giving the gift of wisdom and understanding to a person at the time that they are learning in their individual circumstances of life and relating to that portion with which God is causing every man to live not by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth or every scripture that's written or every application of how the word of God is made to that person by way of the Spirit of God revealing it to them. So for me God's Spirit stopped me from continuing on in the study because there were things in my life I needed to deal with, sin that was in my life that I needed to wrestle with and to stop and remove from me so that I would not be distracted or attracted either way from doing anything less than what God wanted to reveal. Because what we've done in this study is we haven't looked at the Holy Ghost, as he used to be called in the past Pentecostal and denominational movement. We haven't looked at the Holy Spirit as many charismatic people and Pentecostal people have done since the 1800s, you know, and coming forward and saying into the 1900s and causing people to be wrapped up into the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost. But we've been looking at and examining the person that God is who is called the Spirit of God. And we've looked at the scriptures in Genesis and begin to understood that there's something and some reason why in the beginning he's called the Spirit of God. And in the end he's called the Holy Spirit. And at times he's mentioned as if the Spirit gives you understanding and the Spirit does this because He is a person and we have to make that distinction but one of the things that I said at the beginning of the study as we've chosen to use as it were our base text 
of which we build our foundation upon, our structure, isn't just the Word of God as we learned it and God has applied it to my life as way of meaning to communicate it so that you can understand who the Spirit of God is in a personal and intimate way, revealing Jesus in such a way that you would know not only the Father as God and not only the Son as Jesus, but the Spirit of God as He is a person and as one of that which we call the triunity or the tri aspect or the trinity or the trinitarian aspect of what God is being Father, Son, and Spirit. And so, using the scriptures, of course, as our proof text, we use as our foundation the living water by Chuck Smith. And we have been creating an environment with which the Holy Spirit could come and visit and the Spirit of God could reveal to us the truth. And so, at times as I've done this, each time the Holy Spirit has seemed to manifested himself in a way that I was a little surprised quite frankly and then gradually began, be, began to become dependent upon to recognize why and what he was doing and then suddenly in the midst of this study he began to talk to me in a way that was different than God the Father talks to me which when, <laughs> when God when God the Father talks, you listen. Or when Jesus talks to me, and you know, I relate to Jesus, and you know, it's awesome, but it's still kind of, you know, you're listening. But there's a uniqueness about the Spirit of God that is so sensitive, so tender, so likened unto a flame, yet not extinguished, and not a fire and not like all these other aspects of great emotional feelings that the Pentecostals and the Charismatics and people that operate in spirit and whatever they're doing have gotten so carried away about and rolling around on the floor and barking like dogs and throwing gold dust in the air and doing all kinds of weird things. But the sensitivity of the fruits of the Spirit, the peace, When I let go, it's as though peace takes a physical form and he's manifested in the Spirit of God. When I withdraw from the world and the noise and the people and the things around me, it's as though I'm outside of myself into a place of perfect content of love. Meaning not contented, but the content of love. It's as though it's a physical being which the Spirit of God is. And that manifests itself as love. When I recognize that difference it's as though God wants to reveal who He is by the Spirit of God. And I've said that in this study that I am sure with all of my being that the Spirit of God is beyond what we think He is. No one, as I've said in the past, will come up and say, I am the Spirit of God. Is it going to happen? I'm convinced that Nowhere at any point in time will we know completely the Spirit of God as He is revealing Himself to us in some ways as much as our limitations can handle and as much as personifying Himself in some way to us we can make certain amount of adaptions of our mindset to relate to Him in a certain way but I don't see Him as being that person we're going to go point at and say that's that's the Spirit of God because you see God the Father is revealed in Jesus Jesus is the personification in physical form of God the Father so likewise 
my personal opinion, and maybe not scriptural because there's nothing to say one way or the other, but my personal opinion is that the personification of the physical form of the Spirit of God is Jesus. Now, you can argue and debate about that, and I won't, but you can ask God to reveal to you the truth, and He will. So, learning for me has come about full circle where now, when I thought I had known so much in my foolishness and pride of the Spirit of God, He chose to open my eyes to Him in a way that I never imagined before. And so I do see the Spirit of God as being bigger and quite more so uh, of the omnipresence of God, if you would accept that, than I see of him being in some way personified in some dove or some fire or some something you know that we put a finger on and say that's God. Now, I do believe that God manifests himself in some forms at different times to reveal himself to us in some ways that we can understand. So like the donkey speaking, you know, that's obviously God speaking to the donkey or the dove that came at the baptism of Jesus, you know, revealing the tenderness of the Spirit of God or my hummingbirds that come or the times that God has spoken to me in different ways or even today a dragonfly that passed by. Do I believe that God is in everything? No, I'm not a universalist and I'm not some kind of spiritualist. I believe that God chooses to highlight and exemplify things at times to us as he so chooses. Kind of like what they say about when Jesus appeared before he was incarnate. There's a technical term for that. It's, uh, I forget the technical terminology because we're trying now to not take our own understanding and apply it to God but we're trying to get God to apply his understanding to us so that we would expand our mindset so we could look at God as complete and whole and in a way maybe we've never thought of before that might be quite a bit more tender quite exponentially greater than we ever imagined and so much more so a being beyond our comprehension that the best we can do is to act and relate to him as he chooses to relate to us in his own way by his own choice and by his own determination because he is God. The Spirit strives with men. Genesis 6.3 says, And the Lord said, My Spirit shall not strive with man forever. That part of His Spirit, that part of the person of the Spirit of God, is how I see when we use the scripture that says, The love of God draws men to repentance. Meaning that if you love God, you'll be pulled to turning away from causing pain and hardship or even suffering to yourself, much less suffering to God, because you'll love Him and want to please Him. And that's what a love of God, drop men to repentance, means to me. And as we <coughs> look at the scripture, when it says the Spirit of God will not always strive with men, a lot of people use that to apply towards the evil that's in the world at this time that says he which constrains once he is removed and usually that's applied in prophecy to identify the power or the manifestation of the Holy Spirit withholding evil from being completely run amok in the world now that could be the spirit constraining or the spirit striving with man and as I understand in my new awareness, so to speak, or as I begin to comprehend 
the old scriptures as they seem to be highlighted by the Spirit of God, I see that freedom that we have of our own mindset, really choosing how we want to believe, but if we are willing, God has always been open to revealing to us Himself. We haven't always been acceptable of it and we've been terrified by it at times. And so we've pulled away from Him and pulled away from truths that maybe God wanted to reveal to us. And I don't say open yourself up to anything spiritual and try all spiritisms, you know, and try to manifest something that's not God Himself telling you or showing you, but I do believe that God the Spirit is trying to take us to a place we haven't been because our nature is violent. And so He wants to remove that by showing us love, peace, and joy is that quality of having the Spirit of God in you. That the gifts of the Spirit are not himself, the personage. It's not him being who he is in us. It's rather just a part of something that can be done by way of who the Holy Spirit is and what God is. And God can do anything that he wants to, anytime he wants to, any way he wants to. Whether you think that there's a limitation in this universe of that, that's your choice. But the reality is no, because if you use the word God, you automatically have to include the idea that God can do anything he wants to. He doesn't limit himself and have to prove to himself that he's limited. No, God is limitless. Otherwise, you need another God. <laughs> and so, my belief and my strong impression listening to the Spirit of God speak to me even now, this moment is that we're moving too fast we're pushing too hard we're running farther and doing more than what God would have us to do the Spirit of God in my mind and my heart and my spirit is telling me to back up stop slow down be still Quiet your thoughts. Sensitize your heart. Be reflective in your emotions, but be observant in your spirit so that you can see the moments as eternal and experience the reality of eternity now as well as knowing what eternal life shall be, which is the knowledge of the Father and of the Son. So, part of our eternal life experience as we pass from this mortality into immortality, we need to apply now. And that is the quality of our experiential, if you want to call it that, or our quality of our living the moment in the Spirit of God. Walking in the Spirit, walking in God, as it were. Because that's not our nature, I would say those things that make you hurry up and run, those things that make you anxious and worry, those things that are causing you to move in some polarity one way or the other, those are striving against the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God wants you to know the Father. The Spirit of God wants you to know Jesus. The Spirit of God wants to do everything that He has the capability of in this world, as He is here now, to prepare us for eternity, but to also make us aware of the reality of God in us. And we're not doing it. We're choosing to run away from the moment that we should be living with the oneness of God in us. For Jesus said, I pray that they may be one 
as I and my Father are one. For me, this study has become that. It isn't just about anymore the Spirit of God only and learning to understand Him in a personal and intimate way and relate to Him in a dynamic way that we've maybe never thought of before, but also to become one with Jesus again that maybe we haven't done before. To become one with Father, God, that maybe for you is commonplace. But for me, there's something new going on. And I admit to some pretty unusual experiences with God. Maybe there's more to this stillness and peace than we understand. So rather than strive against what the Spirit of God is doing, perhaps we can choose to move with what the Spirit of God wants us to do instead of being in conflict with what God is revealing to us of the Spirit that we call the Holy Spirit.